Well, how long has it been? It's been two months since my last video? Oh, Christ on crutches, I need to get busy right now! Hello and welcome to DIY Wealth, the only finance channel on YouTube, oddly. I'm surprised that nobody has thought to make one of these before. Now, if you saw my last video, I talked about something that I had noticed over the last 10 years of uh, writing for financial publications and being around generally wealthy people, especially people in the finance industry, and just observing what they actually did to build wealth that's kind of different from what you would normally see out there percolating in the world in the various interwebs, and especially on TikTok. You can check out that video by clicking this link, but just as a quick recap, one of the things that I talked about was just an observation of how wealthy people tend to think about money that's different from how I see normal people think about money. And specifically, they divide their money into basically three categories, streams, siphons, and stores. Streams are revenue streams that are coming in either through businesses, it could also be dividends or royalty income, basically anything that has money flowing in. Siphons, as they sound, are things that suck your money away. And so what wealthy people tend to do is they try to maximize their streams and reduce their siphons as much as humanly possible. You can interpret that as like me telling you not to buy a latte, but uh, I'll be honest with you, rich people tend to buy a lot of lattes. A lot of lattes. But the topic of this video is more about stores. That is places where rich people tend to store or aggregate their wealth. Stores are there to ensure that if anything goes wrong, you do have some place that you can draw money from, either in retirement or just in day-to-day -day life. Now, this may come as a surprise to you, but I actually beat the market in 2022. My money did not go down along with everybody else's, but that's mainly because I primarily invest in boomer stuff. And if you follow any of my newsletters, some of which are not available in America, but some of which are available on patreon.com slash DIY well. And in fact, early in 2022, I made a bet with a trader, a, a person who thought that they could beat the market just by like jumping in and out of stocks based on like the signals that they saw in prices. Yeah, I haven't heard from them a whole lot recently. Considering how badly things went in the stock market, I wouldn't be surprised if he, like many traders, blew up his account and just doesn't have any money anymore. But anyway, yeah, I bet this dude that it, I could beat the market and probably beat him just by investing $10 into a single stock, specifically an ETF called TDIV. And that ETF just focuses on the dividend paying stocks in the NASDAQ. You can see all the trades here, you can see what my average price was, and you can see what TDIV is worth now. So I made money! Woohoo! So why then am I completely changing up my strategy for 2023? For the past several years, and in fact nearly like five years, I've been kind Kind of like skydiving without a parachute. I've just not had an emergency fund at all. And while I had like a bunch of money in uh, various brokerage accounts, I had like four brokerage accounts at one point, I didn't have any money just in a savings account that was just there. And to be honest with you, uh, my son was born and now I have two kids and a wife and I also have multiple businesses. And so all the risk taking that I'm doing, I'm doing primarily in those businesses. I don't need to add an extra layer of risk taking into where I'm trying to store my wealth. I also don't want to take the time to actually like manage it actively. That sounds dumb and like a waste of my time. And so I'm not going to do it. And so I'll tell you the types of stocks that I'm investing in now or where you can actually find the stocks I'm investing in now. But before we get into all that, first and foremost, I'm not a financial advisor. So you probably shouldn't listen to me. Make sure to listen to professionals and not some random bald guy on the internet. Yeah, am I covered legally? Okay, great. So I'll be completely honest with you. I'm not like super into taking risks right now. And I look I looked at my two kids and I said, I was never afraid before you showed And so right now, more than any other point in my life, I wanna make sure that while I'm trying to build my wealth mainly by increasing my revenue streams, the money that I have saved and stored, I don't wanna risk at all. So one of the first things that I did was buy just an absolute metric F ton of gold and silver. And in fact, I bought enough gold and silver to bring it up to about five to 10% of my entire net worth. And I didn't do that because like, I think that there's anything super special about gold or silver. You can check out my other video about why not to invest in gold and silver. And honestly, it's not for everyone. But if I'm going to live by this like super risk averse philosophy, then it would make sense to hold something 
that has never fully lost its value. Yeah, your dollars in your pocket. There have been countries and currencies that have become worthless before, but has there ever been a point in history where gold has become worthless? I want you to keep in mind that I started buying gold and silver when it was like not priced very high. Like I did it like the end of last year and the beginning of this year. So I actually didn't spend that much money on my gold and silver compared to where prices have gone now. I don't recommend chasing after stuff that's on an uptrend just because that doesn't make any sense. Think of this as like a sort of a pyramid. You want the base of your pyramid of wealth to be just something that never changes, that never falters. It is there is the foundation of everything that you're doing. That could be real estate, that could be land, that could be gold and silver, that could be uh, uh, your Pokemon cards, especially the holographic rare ones. Those were beautiful. I need to bring that back. It doesn't matter so long as that base of your pyramid is in something that you just know is never going to go to zero. That also doesn't mean that you should invest in those things first. Like for example, if you have a 401k with employee matching, you absolutely should do it. Hey presto, that's free money. So in terms of stores of wealth and the other thing that I'm investing in, right now, uh, I'm investing in cash. Specifically, dollars, Canadian dollars, euros, Swiss francs, and yen. The US dollar rose in 2022. And the dollar index is like based on like francs and euros and yen and things like and that. And so all a stronger dollar means is that you could buy more of those other currencies with your dollar. So that's what I did. I bought Money. I'm sure you've been following the news and noticing that uh, uh, bank deposits have been a little bit at risk. And so, you know, I'm not worried about and that. So finally we come to the store of wealth we can call stocks and bonds. The first thing that I did was just consolidate all of my brokerage accounts into a single one. Specifically M1 Finance. Now, I'm not a shill and this is not sponsored by M1 and I'm not being paid by M1 Finance in any way. Here, and if you want proof, and Noah don't edit this out, M1 can suck my fucking little Maybe bleep that. <laughs> but also, M1, if you uh, do actually want to sponsor this channel, give me a call. And so right now I have it set up where I have a credit card with them, a checking account with them that earns about 3.5% interest, as well as a brokerage account with them that only holds, and I'm not shitting you right now, only the stocks that I recommend in my newsletters. I am only eating my own cooking from here on out. I wait 48 hours to add anything to the portfolio that I recommend so that like people that read patreon.com slash DIY wealth get a chance to do so. I firmly believe in the things that I've been recommending and so that's just a track record of what I'm buying. I also don't plan on selling any stocks this year or really ever. Like I have some parameters for when I would cut a stock or when I would sell a stock, but right now nothing looks like it's that much at risk. Most of it is just like large cap and ETFs, you know, boomer stocks, stuff that I'm not worried about because I don't wanna have to worry about this kind of so stuff. So one of the little mini portfolios, my M1 brokerage account, I call the easy peasy portfolio. And if you want just free stock advice, I'm gonna give it to you. Just three tickers. First category, this should be 40% of your portfolio. SCHD or SPHD or DTD or just any sort of like high quality dividend paying fund. The value investing kind of stuff. So if you have $10,000, $4,000 goes into one of the ones that I just listed. The next group of 40% is SCHG or uh, QQQ or TDI, really any sort of growth focused ETF. And again, it doesn't really matter which one here, like try to focus on getting the stuff that has extremely low expense ratios, which you can find literally by Googling these tickers. And then the third component of the easy peasy portfolio is just any sort of like bond or like income focused thing. And that should only be 20%. And that could be like a bond ETF like AGG or BND or BSV. But yeah, that's basically the easy peasy portfolio. Here's the strategy. Put money into them every month. And hey presto, the other benefit is that you don't really have to do a whole lot. Like you don't have to sit in front of a trading desk for like eight hours a day. You don't have to prepare a watch list. That's why I'm an investor and not a trader. Anyway, to recap, get your priorities straight. You don't have to be as conservative as I am, but definitely consider making sure that you go in that pyramidal fashion where you have at the base of your wealth or the money that you have stored, uh, something that you can count on for the future. Like you don't need to be crazy about it. Like contribute literally just $10 every single day. In all likelihood, you're probably not going to suffer if you put aside $10 a day. 
And if you're watching this and you're like, I would suffer, well, then don't do it. It could be one dollar a day. Just save something for later. And if you're saving that in cash or in gold, then that's fine. You also don't need to worry about doing one thing yet. You can start somewhere and then build off of that. The whole point is just to start because you'd be surprised if you put aside $10 every single day, you're gonna end the year with $3,650 that you can do a lot more with than $10. And then finally, once you have like a solid base of like money and wealth that you can count on for later, at that point, then you would want to start actually investing in stuff. If you want another prescription that's definitely not financial advice, start with the easy peasy portfolio until you get to about 50 to to $100,000 like in the actual account. Because honest to God, if your goal in life is to become like a trader, like a day trader and stuff like that, you're probably not gonna do so great with anything less than a significant chunk of money at your disposal. And also once you get to that $100,000 mark, that's when your wealth actually does start to really really increase quite a bit. It sounds hard, and it sounds like it's gonna take a long time, and both of those things are true, but it's not impossible. So stick to the plan, beeline it for $100,000, take less risk, not more, and if you want uh, more information about how the wealthy actually invest, check out this video next. That was a video. Hooray, I finally did one.